Welcome back everybody. In today's video we're setting up a small little aquascape for one of my favorite nano fish. It's a beautiful hardscape selected, got some really nice plants. I'm excited about this one. Let's get started. So here's our empty canvas for today, ready to be scaped. We're almost ready, we need a light and then we need a background. Let's start with the background first. And this is the stuff that I love to use for the background. This is this really cheap self-adhesive glass filter you can find in your local hardware store. And this roll is two meters, cost me seven euros, so pretty cheap. And they have loads of different varieties, but I always go for the basic one. Sometimes they also call it cloudy or milky. But yeah, I'm just gonna cut this to size, apply to the background, and then we can continue. background done nice and easy sort of half transparent I think it's called frosted actually so it's just nice to add a background and it just helps to prevent us from seeing the wall behind the tank you know like once the tank is up against the wall just like here I mean it's not really nice to see this through the glass for the tank you know so the background just kind of helps to prevent that yeah it's good let's move on to the uh, the light Yeah, now we're talking. So this is the Chihiro's A2 series, and this is the 401, so the 40 centimeter version. And honestly, this Chihiro's A2 series, I think is currently one of my favorite lights for like nano tanks, because it's very powerful. And well, it's not the cheapest, but it's also not very expensive either. It's like somewhere in the middle. Yeah, it's a pretty decently priced light, very powerful. I'm running the same light on this tank and the one above that. And well, as you can see, it's uh, growing plants just fine and it's currently only on 50% intensity. So yeah, pretty good light. It's not sponsored or anything, just a yeah, very nice product in my opinion. Just want to double check the size because I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, so it's 40 centimeters and then it's 30 by 30 as well. So that's like roughly 36 liters. I guess total volume is more or less 30 liters. Uh, let's check the inches as well. So that's 15 and a half by 11.7 11.7 because let's get started with our substrate layer of course as always i'm using aqua soil but i'm actually trying out a different brand this time i managed to get a bag of the new oasis escaper soil never tried this one before but i heard some good stories about this and they come in black and brown so i got the brown variety would have preferred the black but i think we're going to use some cosmetic sand in the foreground so color doesn't really matter I'm just starting with a thin layer of aquasol, just so we have like a little base to put our hardscape on. So we always like to play around with the hardscape before I start making the video, just I'm a little bit better prepared and kind of know in which direction we're going. So I've selected some really nice piece of hardscape. Uh, let me show you the wood first. I'm going to be using this stuff. Uh, this is called end wood. I've used this a few times now. I've also used it in the XXL vase behind me. And I really like this wood. It's very easy to work with because it doesn't release any tannins and it also doesn't grow any mold. So it doesn't really affect the water parameters in any way. Um, so I have three pieces. I've got two of these and these have already been used before, but this piece hasn't been used before. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a, a difference in color. It's not really a big deal. It might look a little bit odd in the first few weeks, but uh, once everything becomes waterlogged, then they will look exactly the same. And then these are the rocks and this is called elderly rock or elderly stone. Uh, I've, used, I've also used this a few times now, really love it. There's loads of detail on it and it just kind of looks ancient, you know. I've also used this in the Pipa for Aquascape. It just looks really good, especially in combination with some cosmetic sand and some small gravel, you know. So I've got three pieces of that as well. So yeah, let's see if we can make a nice hardscape. So 
this is what I had in mind for the wood place. We can have a nice triangular style composition. We can have tall stamp lines in the, in the left corner. Have them going down as well. I think that's gonna look really good. Let's uh, see if we can add in the rocks as well. Yeah, I quite like that. I think it's quite a bold hardscape. Like normally you wouldn't put these big rocks like right in front, but I think it can work. For sure need to glue the hardscape together because these pieces of wood are gonna float. So let's do that first and then we can continue with the rest of the substrate. So in my opinion, the fastest, the easiest, and maybe the cheapest way to glue your hardscape together with these cotton pads and liquid super glue. So I just take these tiny pieces of cotton pad, I grab them with my tweezers and then waste them in between the points that I want to connect. Then saturate them with some cheap liquid super glue, wait a few seconds, that's it, super easy. Okay, hardscape is glued, little test. I'm basically shaking the entire tank in the cabinet, so I think that's good. So we can now fill in the rest of the substrate. Just wanna do one more thing before that, and that is to add a few of these root caps. Um, I'm gonna use quite a lot of plants in here, and the majority of the plants are like really heavy root feeders. So I wanna make sure that we have enough nutrients in the substrate, and also so I don't have to like add in a lot of liquid fertilizer. So just a few of these root caps. I'm gonna open them up and sprinkle them uh, on top of the, the, the thin layer of aquasol, cover it with more aquasol, and then the substrate is done. That is looking good, really like that. I'm thinking to actually bring the aquasol to the front and basically stop here and just have cosmetic sand in this little corner. I think that can look good. Let's give it a try. If it doesn't look good, we can always remove it. Yeah, really happy with that actually. Uh, I think that's the substrate done. The sand and the gravel, I will add it later because if we do that now and then we start planting, there's always going to be some um, tiny pieces of aquasol spilling on top of the sand. So it's better to do that last. Let's do a little view from the top as well. That looks good. Quick little break just to thank the sponsor of today's video and that is F-Zone. Regular viewers of the channel will know that I've been working with F-Zone for a while now. I really like the products that they offer and I like that they ship internationally. I have a lot of viewers, you guys from all over the world and for me it's important that the products that I'm using are available to you guys as well. So if a company ships internationally, then for me that's a huge bonus. So I've already shown you guys a lot of their products, uh, CO2 regulators, stainless steel canister filters, auto top of systems. And later in this video, I'm gonna show you another product that I really like. So I'll leave the Epson website in the video description. Don't forget to check that out. And also don't forget to use my discount code, MJ Amsterdam gives you 10% off. It's like an easy way to support the channel as well. So end of the commercial break, back to the video. Okay, so I've already prepared everything. And of course, as always, we have a beautiful selection from Dandelion plants. So they have a new one in the assortment, the Limnophila hyperidoides. I never used this plant before, but I'm um, really excited about it because it's gonna, if it works, it's gonna be really beautiful. I've also selected an Echinodorus, the Echinodorus cordifolius mini. So it's like a really small Echinodorus. I've also got the classic Ludwigias plus to super red, probably the easiest red stem plant. And then we have some Pogastamon decanensis. Also haven't used this one in a while. So this is gonna go mostly in the, in the background. And then I have another tray. Um, what do we have over here? Oh, this one is also new. Um, new in assortment from Dandelion Plants. This is the Blixa Japonica as an in vitro. I have some Junkus Repens. And oh, this one is also new. <laughs> Lots of new plants. Uh, this is the Lomariopsis lineata. And I've actually tied it to a few pebbles, just so we can kind of place it randomly wherever we want. And lastly, I have some um, Helanthium tenalum broadleaf. This is uh, going to be a foreground plant. I think that's it. Maybe I'll add some more later on, but let's first start with this. Okay, so the first plant going in is the Pogostemon decanensis, all the way in the left back corner. Really like this plant, quite a thick stem, and then these really spiky leaves. This looks really good. And I'm just using one pot of this plant. There's one pot and I had quite a long stem, so I cut the stems in half. 
So I'm planting both the top and the bottom portion. Then to the right of the progesterone, I'm using the Limnophila hyperidoides. So I never used this plant before, but I've seen pictures and it looks amazing. So really hope it will do well in here. And I've got two pots of this Limnophila, so I'm going to use quite a lot in here. It's really going to be a focal point. Next to the Limnophila, I'm going to plant the Ludwigia super red. Yeah, just a really easy red stem plant. Even grows red without CO2 in medium light, so highly recommend it. Okay, so then the Echinodorus, uh, believe it or not, but this was one pot and we actually have like, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, six of these individual plants, so <laughs> amazing portions. Um, I've never used this Echinodorus before, but I've seen some pictures and it should stay really short and really compact as well. So I'm thinking in this open area here and maybe some more some over here it's a bit of a, a bit of a gamble a bit of an you know experiment let's see if it's gonna work okay so i've got two of them bunched together let's see if that fits here i love how that looks looks so good and then three more bunched together let's see if that works i've got one left i don't know just put it here i still have some open space here maybe this one will grow a little bit taller Nice. Then the Blixa japonica is going in front of the Pogestamon decanensis. So the Pogestamon decanensis will stay vibrant green. And the Blixa might turn a little bit orange reddish, especially with high light and low nutrients. I'm also going to plant some Blixa on this side, next to the uh, Ludwigia super red. So I just found a nice spot for the Lomariopsis, the, the, rock, the rocks with that sort of freshwater seaweed looking like stuff. I think the uh, common name is Suswasser just, just tank, something like that. Yeah, I never used it before, really curious about it. I have one more, I think maybe somewhere here. Here we go, that's nice. So we have four of those, uh, four of those rocks with fresh water seaweed. Let's give everything a little spray. Some of the stems are starting to dry out already. So we still have quite a bit of open space in the foreground and I basically just have the um, helanthium left so it's not really enough to cover everything. So I just found one pot of Marsalea herzuta, still had this left over from a previous build. But I think it's actually quite nice if we mix those two together because the helanthium has like a straight leaf and the Marsalea has a round leaf so it's going to be like a nice mixed carpet. And the last plant, the Juncus repens, I'm basically just gonna plant this like a little bit everywhere. It's quite a slow growing plant, so it's not really like gonna take over anything, but just a little bit here and there kind of adds the wild, wild touch to it. Here we go, that's looking pretty good. I think the only thing that's missing is a little bit of moss on the wood. So I just removed some, uh, some Ricardia from one of my other tanks. If you can focus, it would be nice. Yeah, here we go. So I think I'm just gonna add a little bit of this Ricardia to the wood here, I think that would look really good. And then we're basically done with the planting. And now for the final touches, I have some ADA La Plata sand, as well as some ADA Aqua Gravel. So we can use the gravel to kind of make a border along where the, the aqua soil is right now. And then that will hopefully stop the soil from rolling onto the sand. Yeah, I think that's gonna look really good. Okay, planting is done, really happy with that. Can't wait to see how this is going to look in a few weeks from now. Of course, you guys are going to see it in a few minutes, but I still have to be a little bit more patient. Uh, one more thing that I want to add to this aquarium, I'm going to use an external filter, so I want to add some glass lily pipes. So this set right here is my absolute favorite. I already have one up and running on the Pipa for Scape. It's from F-Zone, and I'll leave a link in the description, including my, uh, my discount code for F-Zone. So these are really tiny. And normally to find glass lily pipes for an aquarium of this size is quite challenging because most of them are just just a bit too big, you know? So we have a nice spring brush. 
Here, here's the outflow. See, that's like the perfect size in my opinion. And the good thing is, it also comes with a skimmer. And this one is also very small. Look at the size. Literally the tiniest glass skimmer I've ever seen. What I like about these Epson sets is that they also include a reducer. So if you want to go from 12, 16 millimeter uh, diameter pipes to 9, 12 millimeters, you can use that as well. A uh, small piece of tubing to help with that. And then they also include a ton of suction cups. Like there's like three, seven, seven suction cups. Oh wait, eight, another one. Eight suction cups in total. So yeah, it's nice. Really happy with this set. Yeah, that looks pretty good, but it's kind of blocking the view to the background. Not really happy with that. So I think we might try to add them on that side, but pointing forward. Yeah, so basically like this, pointing forward. I'll move the skimmer there as well. Not sure if it's going to work because these suction cups don't really work very well on that glass foil, but let's just give it a try. I think that will look better. I'm going to move the tank in position, fill up with water, and that's it. Okay, so fast forward, it's now been exactly one month since I set up this tank. It's looking pretty good, can't wait to show you guys. Um, I also just got back from holiday, so I was a little bit afraid it would be full of algae, but it's actually doing good. It's also already stocked, I've already added some fish and some shrimp, but there's one issue there. Um, the fish that I added are like super shy, so it looks like there's no fish in the tank. So back in my local fish shop, see if we can pick up something else, just to add a little bit more movement to the tank. So see this little guy over here? That's a black tiger Dario. I currently already have four of them in the tank. Mine are a little bit bigger, but I don't see them at all. And I also already have a small group of these guys, the Celestial Pearl Daniel. Again, they're quite shy as well. So we need something else. So I was now looking at these fish over here. These are the Emerald Rosbora. Very similar to the Celestial Pearl Daniels, but maybe that could be something. I think I'm going to grab a small group of these guys, the uh, Emerald Rasboras. And then I was also looking at the shrimp. I'm actually doing another shrimp tank. And they always have a really nice shrimp collection in the shop. So just look at these red cherries. We have the beautiful crystal blacks. But I think I'm actually going to grab the uh, crystal reds. I haven't had a crystal red shrimp tank in ages, so let's do that as well. So this is how the aquascape looks now, one month later, and I'm really happy with it. In the next few weeks I want to increase the light intensity and fertilizer to improve the color of the limnophila. The echinodorus has finally started growing as well, I just need to remove some of the old leaves because they are starting to turn brown. The only thing that hasn't really grown much yet is the Suswasser tang, but this is a slow growing plant, so I guess we have to be a bit more patient. So right now we have the new emerald rasboras, the celestial pearl daniels, loads of these super dark colored shrimp and lastly the black tiger darios which are still hiding. Oh there's one baby guppy as well, no idea how he ended up in here but he can stay for now. But the reason I named this tank the Myanmar jungle is because all three of these fish are from Myanmar which is a country in Asia. So I think that's pretty cool, we almost got ourselves a little biotope here. Of course there will be updates on this tank in the future, for now this is it, hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you next time.